stove with a look at the Hall of Fame tracker, courtesy of Ryan Thibodeau, a.k.a. not Mr. Tibbs on Twitter. And you take a look at the percentage of ballots already made public. He's got Kurt Schilling going up about 4% to 73.8. Remember, you need 75% for Hall of Fame induction. Bonds and Clemens above 73%. Scott Rowland, 68.5%. And Todd Helton right now, 55.4%. Those votes tend to trend down once more the ballots come in. We want to mention that. Jack Curry, obviously, has a Hall of Fame vote. This is where the gloves come off. He and Flash <laughs> step into the octagon, and we see what happens. All right, so we're going to show your ballot now, but, Jack, there are are certain guys you just do not vote for. So let's clear the, ru the runway right, right there. Right. I don't vote for anyone who was mentioned in the Mitchell Report or has failed a PED test or had strong and substantive suspicions of PEDs around them. So obviously, when you look at my ballot, you're not going to see a check mark next to Bonds or Clemens. And those are the big names. And when I look at those two players, guys, they obviously are amongst the greatest players of all time. I think the easy thing that a lot of my colleagues have done is, sure, check the box next to them. We don't know who did what, but we're reporters. We know who did some things. My eyes and my ears are the most important things that I have as a reporter. Interview people, find things out, and I am not comfortable putting the check mark next to them. I've heard some people say, well, they were Hall of Famers before they used PEDs. And I always use this analogy. So if there was a student who was uh, on track to be the valedictorian, but then as you got toward graduation, there was heavy suspicion that that student cheated, would you say, ah, just make him or her the valedictorian anyway? They were on that path. You never would. That would not happen. So when I hear about Bonds and Clemens and how writers or voters are keeping them out of the Hall of Fame, I always say they created the suspicion. This is their doing. They're keeping themselves out. So I'm assuming that Gary Sheffield would be in the same conversation for you. Hit over 500 home runs, but was named in the Mitchell Report. Gary Sheffield is a very tricky one for me, Flash, because of the fact that when I watched this guy hit and talk to his teammates and opposing pitchers, they feared having to face this guy. And the numbers are there. You point out Gary Sheffield's offensive numbers, but yes, he has admitted in working out with Bonds that he did use substances. He says they were unknowingly used. It was the cream and the clear. But I've got to be consistent with any connection to PEDs for me. You're not going to get that honor of being in the Hall of Fame. And by the way, clearing up one thing, everyone says, oh, you're not going to put this guy in the Hall of Fame. All of these players are represented in the Hall of Fame. There are artifacts from Roger Clemens' career. There are artifacts from Barry Bonds' career. This is just whether or not you're going to give them baseball's highest honor. And if you've cheated on the field of play, you have tilted the stakes in your direction, that's a no for me. All right, so Bonds.